You've probably heard of Pong, the first wildly successful arcade game machine, a revolution in gaming, and along with the Magnavox Odyssey, the true beginning of the video game industry. And you've probably heard of Nolan Bushnell, the man usually credited as the founder of Atari, the maker of Pong, and the man who started that revolution. But someone who is less well known is Ted Dabney, the co-founder of Atari, a man essential to the beginnings of the video game industry, but someone overlooked for years, overshadowed by the more ambitious Bushnell. Dabney's contribution to video game history was forgotten for decades. In this video I'd like to spend some time focusing on that contribution. Ted Dabney was born in San Francisco, California. After graduating from high school he joined the US Marine Corps where he took courses on electronics. Dabney was later hired by technology company Ampex, where he worked on video display devices. These two experiences would lay the foundations for his later work at Atari. It was also at Ampex where he met Nolan Bushnell, a young electrical engineer full of ideas for business ventures. The colleagues became friends, often avoiding work by playing games of Go together. It was here that the two colleagues came up with the idea of a coin-operated video game. The initial idea was to use a simple computer inside a specially designed cabinet. The two decided to pursue the idea and co-founded Syzygy, from where they created the first commercially available video game, Computer Space. The initial idea was Bushnell's, who had some experience with the early mainframe computer game, Space War. He dreamed of making a standalone version of the game for use in arcades, but the computer power necessary was too expensive to make a viable product. Then the two came up with the idea of manipulating the CRT screen itself, rather than using a computer to generate images. It was Dabney, the display device expert, who worked on turning the idea into a reality. The pair then worked with arcade game manufacturer Nutting Associates, who agreed to produce 1,500 cabinets of the game. The game had limited success, but proved the concept that a standalone video game in an arcade was a viable product. From there, Dabney and Bushnell, after changing the name of the company to Atari, hired another Ampex colleague, Al Alcorn, with a view to designing more complicated games. Bushnell, having seen the tennis game on the first home video game system, Odyssey, asked Alcorn to program a clone, which came to be known as Pong. Alcorn used the system developed by Dabney for computer space, and modified it to be able to play a back and forth paddle game. Finding it difficult to source a manufacturer, the trio were forced to make the cabinets themselves, with Dabney sourcing monitors and cabinets, and Alcorn and Bushnell sourcing circuits and boards. The game was wildly successful. An oft-told story is that only days after installing the first test Pong cabinet, Al Alcorn got a phone call saying that the machine had malfunctioned. Alcorn, worried that a machine could be faulty so soon after release, pondered what the problem might be while driving to the arcade to fix it. Fearing the worst, he arrived at the arcade only to discover that the receptacle for quarters, a simple coffee pot, had overflowed. The game was so popular that the coin receiver had jammed and needed to be cleared out. Alcorn emptied the quarters and told the arcade owner, if he had that problem again, to call him and he'd come straight away. But with success came problems, at least for Dabney. Bushnell, ever a self-aggrandizer, began taking decisions without him. He hired several high-level managers without consulting Dabney, managers Dabney didn't regard as very talented. The board of directors even had meetings without him. It was around this time that Atari had set up a subsidiary called Key Games in order to get around manufacturers' exclusivity agreements. According to Dabney in a 2010 interview, Bushnell told him about the situation. But then when Dabney repeated that story to others, Bushnell brought it up with the board of directors, who promptly asked for Dabney to resign. Dabney even claimed that Bushnell threatened to transfer all the assets from Atari to another company if Dabney didn't leave, which would have left Dabney with nothing. Meanwhile, in later interviews, Bushnell said Dabney left Atari voluntarily because the business had got too big for him. Dabney went on to work in technological companies, and despite Bushnell's poor treatment of him, he worked on some games and hardware products for Bushnell's Chuck E. Cheese restaurants. Though, according to Dabney, Bushnell originally asked him to again partner with him in the venture. However, as the restaurants eventually went through financial difficulties, in the end Dabney didn't even get paid for all his work with them. This was Dabney's last involvement with video games, when he decided to leave Southern California, retreating to the countryside to set up a grocery store with his wife. In the meantime, Bushnell continued to work at Atari, overseeing its sale to Warner Interactive and the release of the Atari 2600. He was feted as the inventor of video games. When asked about computer space in the early days of Atari, Bushnell, including in his autobiography, The Book of Nolan, would claim to be the sole engineer of computer space, downplaying Dabney's and others' contributions. When asked about Dabney leaving Atari, he made it seem like Dabney just couldn't handle the pace of the industry, rather than being sidelined and forced out. There was even a movie relating to the founding of Atari and the arcade game industry in production in the mid-2010s, which failed to consult Dabney or even mention him in the script, focusing only on Bushnell. 
and there the story lay for nearly 40 years. If you looked up the history of video games, you would read all about Nolan Bushnell and next to nothing about Ted Dabney. This was until game journalist Leonard Herman was writing a piece for Edge magazine in 2009. Curious about this Ted Dabney character he kept reading about, Herman tracked him down and finally got his side of the story. The Edge piece opened the floodgates and soon other journalists and historians were contacting Dabney in order to get his side of the story and numerous interviews followed. This has allowed some of the record to be set straight and Dabney's contribution to be respected for what it was. Dabney unfortunately passed away in 2017 at his home in Northern California. At least before his death his story could be told. Even today you could be forgiven for never having heard of Ted Dabney. There is a lot more information on Bushnell out there. However, without Dabney, the history of video games would be very different indeed. In his own words, Nolan had the ideas and I knew how to make them work. Thanks for watching. My sources are listed below in the description.